Hey, what's up, guys? Dropped a free play yesterday on the Astros money line. Unfortunate stuff there. Pretty frustrating. Astros got shut out. I think they had seven hits, zero runs. Jose Altuve kicks a ball into foul territory when he's trying to turn a, fa a fancy little double play, a double play that I feel like he probably turns more times than not. And uh, Astros get off to a really bad first inning and never really recover from it. So that's unfortunate. Now, I want to say with my losses or how I handled my losses, just, just sports betting mindset-wise, right, is I look at games and I make educated decisions and I find all these angles, right? Putting in the work before I pull the trigger on a bet. It's not like just an impulse decision whenever I bet on these games. And the um, the mindset is, even though I lost yesterday, I feel that if those two teams play in that ballpark, that situation, coming out of the All-Star break, first game back, one game on the slate, all those things in Arlington um, with that weather, if they played a thousand times or a hundred thousand times, and we had such a low, uh, massive sample size, right? Then the Astros would be profitable long term in that situation. Now the sample size is one game because there's only one game played, right? When you bet on a game, it's not like you get to average that game simulated a hundred times. But the the one game it can be, you know, it can be a fluke, right? And it doesn't mean that I'm always on the right side and every time I lose, it's just a fluke. But if, you, if you're if you betting on where the value is, you can realize that even when you lose, you're still making the right decision. And um, long term, you're going to win more than you lose, but the edge is so slight. And it's not like anybody's going to win 9 out of 10 times, even 7 out of 10 times. Really, people are shooting to go six and four in a 10 game stretch and just rinse and repeat and let your your money grow exponentially and let your bankroll compound by betting the same percentage, a small percentage of your bankroll. So my record is second half, 0 and 1, but we're going on return on investment, so minus 133. My free play today, I like for a lot of similar reasons. I'm taking the raise on the run line over the Orioles. Orioles played uh, well going into the All-Star break. They really just uh, won a series against Toronto, but it was a pretty impressive manner. And then um, the, the Rays struggled, but they kind of struggled against the Yankees. So two teams going, like, having opposite weeks leading up to the All-Star break. I've said in yesterday's video, and my mindset really is that the All-Star break is kind of the ultimate reset button. I don't think that streaks that were going into the All-Star break are necessarily going to continue coming out of the All-Star break. So I think the Rays, um, you know, what what better team to bounce back and get back on the right track then than the Orioles, um, their team that, you know, top teams in the league should beat up on. I think that the Rays aren't a team that can necessarily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big dogs. I don't think they're a team that's going to go out and win a playoff series, but I do think they're a team that's capable of sneaking into the playoffs, and the way that they do that is beating teams that they're supposed to beat. So I think the Orioles are a team that really you might see the Rays sweep, whereas another top team kind of takes a day off and maybe goes 2-1 and one or 3-1 and one against the Orioles, whereas the Rays are sweeping those teams. And it's much similar to the Oakland Athletics, um, where there are teams that are making playoff pushes, but at the end of the day, I ultimately don't think they're capable of doing any damage in a playoff game where everyone's going to give their best effort and you have a better team beating a worse team. So I like the Rays here on the run line. The uh, price that I'm getting it at is minus 105. That's my first play today. Um, and then I'll have two more that I'm locking in. Got to do the write-ups and get that email out, which I'll do shortly. Excited about today. Excited about the future of this YouTube channel and uh, the rest of the MLB season. And then, of course, college, uh, college football in NFL just around the corner. So really exciting time of year. Um, looking to bounce back, though. Yesterday was yesterday was tough to watch, man. Not the way that I wanted to start the second half of the season. But I'm excited about today. Excited about the long term on this channel. Thank you guys for supporting me. Thanks for keeping it positive to those of you who do. And uh, if you don't keep it positive, I mean, just go watch another channel. And I'm going to have to block all the fake accounts that the same person's creating commenting mean things, um, but if they want to keep making uh, accounts, I'll just keep taking down their comments because I feel like a huge problem that I see in the sports betting community is just 
toxic behavior. You'll see somebody who's another sports better. They'll post a super positive comment on your page. And then you'll get all these negative comments. And it's like, it's so obvious. My channel's not that big. So it's not that hard to narrow it down who is making all the negative comments. And it's just, it's bizarre to me because I feel like I think of, I like time block my day and I have to be so efficient. I'm doing so many things and I have to be so productive with every hour of the day that I get. And I feel like if anybody is using like minutes, seconds and hours of their day to be negative, like what does that say about the work that they're putting into their plays and their picks and everything else that they do in life? Like if I had 15 extra minutes, I mean, and I had nothing else to do, like spend that on your relationship, spend that on your wife, make your marriage more successful, like relationship or something, anything productive, work out anything. Um, but it's really bizarre how, and I, I'm saying this because I don't just see it on my channel, but I see it on a lot of channels um, where you have these faceless accounts that are clearly created um, by a, most of the time other sports bettors just trying to bring their competition down. And the reality is we have an edge in 2019 betting on sports and we have an edge because we can share information so easily. And what I mean by that is you can have me who's just a Big 12 expert. I watch all the Big 12 games. I watch every Big 12 game. I don't try to cover the entire NCAA because that would be impossible. And I can just narrow my focus down to Big 12. Well, there might be another guy that has a YouTube channel. He's from Arizona and he does the same thing for Pac-12. And if I spend you know, 60 hours a week on Big 12, he spends 60 hours a week on Pac-12, and then there's someone else for all of the different conferences in college football, well, you can go and you can go spend 30 minutes watching each of our videos. And in about three hours, you see the full landscape of college football that didn't used to exist before YouTube and before social media. And before we had this awesome platform where everyone could just get information so quick on their iPhone. And to me, a lot of what makes great sports betters is being efficient with your time. So if you have three hours to make the best decision for your MLB pick. You want to gather the most information possible. A lot of times, if you're just doing that by yourself, you're going to be so much more um, ineffective than if you use other people as a resource. So I hope that this channel ultimately can be a resource to help people make more educated decisions. Hopefully, I can bring up angles and make picks um, that that will you know help you guys decide if you want to bet on a game or not bet on a game, whatever the case may be. But there's really no reason for people to be negative. Like if somebody makes a sports betting YouTube channel, in my opinion, that helps me. I think it helps everybody that is in the sports betting community on social media because if that person can bring in a couple hundred people into the community. Well, those people are going to go and they're going to watch everyone's videos. It's not like people just watch one person's videos. They watch everyone's videos. Um, so it's it's almost like, you know, are, are two things really enemies? Like, like is, um, you know, I'm trying to think of an example. Like is, is WWE and AEW pro wrestling reference? Are those two enemies really? Or are all their fans the same freaking people that follow both pay-per-views and both everything, right? So all my followers, I'm sure, follow Sports Gambling Daily and follow all these other sports betting pages. I'm kind of getting into a long rant now, but my point is anybody who has a sports betting YouTube channel is probably pretty similar to to how I am, right? They're probably pretty passionate towards sports and towards you know gambling and towards making educated decisions. Uh, with betting on sports. So we're cut from the same cloth, yet everybody's so negative and so toxic and it, nothing just make, nothing makes me more sick than somebody coming on here, posting a positive comment, and I know they're the person behind these fake accounts. Like, get the hell out of here. That's the fakest thing in the world to me. Uh, so it just pisses me off. But with that said, for every negative comment, you know, there's five positive ones and I appreciate you guys so much for that. Um, it really keeps me motivated, keeps me excited. I mean, we're going through you know, a negative time right now, but we're gonna get hot eventually. And when we do, it's gonna be a lot more fun than it is now. Uh, but in the meantime, your support means a lot to me. So thank you guys for that. Best of luck betting on sports today and have a great day, everyone.